Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. This video is a little bit different than the norm. I recently did an interview with Tom for Screw the Commute podcast, and it was an absolute blast. The guy is so funny. I'll put the information in uh, down below so you can check him out, check out his podcast. He gave me permission to record the interview, and it was so much fun. So here it is. Check it out. Hey, everybody, it's Tom here with episode 383 of Screw the Commute podcast. I'm here with Angela Olfest, and her, her parents couldn't have picked a better name for her because her voice is like an angel, and she is a voiceover artist narrator. And she started, uh, what I like about Angela is that she doesn't let anything stop her. It doesn't matter, you know, she has to have a quiet environment, it doesn't matter if motorcycles are going out uh, past her window or dogs are barking. She's made this happen. And she got out of the dreaded J-O-B a long time ago. And uh, we're going to hear her story in a minute. Now, um, make sure you grab a copy of our automation ebook. Uh, we sell this for 27 bucks, but it's yours free for listening to the show. Just one of the tips, one of the tips has saved me seven and a half million keystrokes. And we actually figured it out a couple of years ago. All these automation techniques that we sell in this book, they're yours free for listening to the show. Make sure you pick up a copy at screwthecommute.com slash automate free. Screwthecommute.com slash automate free. And while you're over there, pick up a copy of our podcast app. That's screwthecommute.com slash app. That's A-P-P. And you know how people give you apps and then you got to figure out how to use them? Well, not with us. We actually give you video and screen captures. And if you still can't figure it out, you can email Larry at Antion.com and he will walk you through it to make sure you can take us with you on the road. Now, how would you like to, hold on. Yes. Vibrations even make noise in these things. So how would you like to hear your own voice here on Screw the Commute? Well, if the show's helped you out, uh, helped you with an idea to start a business or helped you with an idea in your business, we want to hear about it. Visit screwthecommute.com. There's a little blue sidebar on the side that says send a voicemail. Talk into your, your phone or your computer if you have a microphone. Tell us how the show's helped you. And don't forget to leave your website on there because you'll get a big shout out on a future episode of Screw the Commute for thousands of people who hear about you. So don't be shy. All right. Now, everybody's uh, suffering because of this pandemic, but I'm not and my students aren't because we know how to sell online. I've been selling online, living this lifestyle for 20, going on 27 years now since the commercial internet started. And then 12 years ago, I decided to... Um, try to ruin my own life by starting a school. <laughs> and I did. And I, I, three years of going through red tape to get the school. And so 12 years ago, we have uh, the only licensed, dedicated internet marketing school in the country, probably the world. And we teach hardcore skills that people actually can use in the, in the real world. I get so sick of this for the four-year colleges where all they learn how to do is protest. And then they run up big, uh, you know, debt, uh, you know, trillions of dollars of debt with these uh, young people. And then they take their MBA and they go down and compete for jobs at Starbucks. Well, that's mm -hmm. not the way it works with, with me. Uh, these hardcore skills are in high demand by every business on earth. Everybody has to have email marketing and websites and blogs and chat bots and shopping carts and all that stuff. And that's what we teach. And we have students making money a few months into the school. So check it out at imtcba.org. And a little later, I'll tell you how you can get a scholarship to the school if you happen to be in my mentor program. We'll tell you about that later. And also, if you are a first responder, military, nurse, uh, there's another group that we give 50% scholarships to to thank you for what you do for us to keep us safe so we can do what we do. All right, let's get to the main event. Angela Olfest is here. Oh, my God. She has 60. <laughs> That's six zero. That's even almost as old as me, a number of books uh, on Audible. 
And this is only in a couple years because she uh, is, <laughs> yeah, well, you see the, if you see the video over on her channel, she has a great YouTube channel called Voice Over Angela. They should call it Voice of an Angel is what they call it. <laughs> um, so when you see her, she claims she's a gearhead. I don't see any grease on her fingertips or anything, but she's 20 years in the automotive industry. And then she transitioned out of it to be a voiceover artist. And so uh, we are thrilled to have her uh, with us. And um, she also helps people uh, learn how to be voiceover artists and start their own home-based business. So Angela, you ready to screw? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The gear, I'm always afraid to say that to somebody I don't know that well, but uh, a gearhead ought to be able to handle it. So, so thanks for coming on, Angela. Thanks for having me. Oh, my God. I, I, was, uh, I found you because I was trying to improve my own skills and uh, do my own book narration. And I found <clears throat> you. And wow, your channel is really, really helpful to people. So tell us a little bit about it. Well, I started my channel just to you know, to pay it forward. Uh, but when I started my own business or when I started voiceover as a side hustle back in June of 2018, you know, I do, I'm one of those people that does just tons of research before I do anything. So I scoured the internet for any kind of research, any kind of anything I could find about voiceover and, you know, namely YouTube. And there wasn't a whole lot out there of, of, from women you know, talking about voiceover. So I thought that once I got the hang of it and I started to do well, I thought I would pay it forward and just share what I had learned as I learn it, you know, with other people. Well, it's uh, I've learned a ton from your channel and uh, oh, I really appreciate it. That's how I found you. Uh, but tell us about your, your journey here. You, you're a gearhead. You've been in the automotive industry for 20 years. And uh, what yeah. made you... Uh, how did you make the transition? What happened that, that you said, you know what, I'm going to quit dealing with cars and I'm just going to talk <laughs> 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 or read is more likely. <laughs> yeah. Read. Um, yeah. I, being a gearhead, you know, the automotive industry just sucked me right in. I, anything to do with cars, I was pretty much there. You said you played with Hot Wheels as a little girl. and stuff. I Barbies. did. I was one of those girls that didn't, you know, I would get a Barbie as a gift and I just, you know, take the head off and throw it somewhere. <laughs> and then <laughs> the Hot Wheels is what I played with out in the backyard in the mud. That was <laughs> what I wanted to do. I wanted to play with cars. Where'd Always you grow there. up? In uh, California, Southern California. Okay. Yeah. So um, I was outside all the time with my Hot Wheels and uh, it just kind of stuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but so you ended up getting into that industry and, and working that for over 20 years, right? Yeah. I started in sales. Um, oh my God, my first week in the automotive industry, I was, it was 9-11. <laughs> so, oh my God. <laughs> no. so like, you know, my very first week of trying to sell cars, um, no one was really out doing anything. Everyone was kind of, uh, you know, in home, in their homes, not doing anything. So. That was kind of rough, but I stuck with it. Then I moved to finance. And then the last 10 years, I was on the service side. And then uh, when I left, I was a reconditioning manager. So I was in charge of reconditioning all the used vehicles and prepping the new cars for sale. Amazing. You started this as a side hustle, right? How did you even get the idea that, you know what, I think I'm going to read books for a living because uh, I guess you're a self-described book nerd. I heard you say that one time. I, I uh, am a book nerd. <laughs> yeah. So what made you think, oh, gee, I could read these and get paid for it? Well, um, I was having lunch one day in my office and reading through MSN or something, and I came across an interview with an audiobook narrator. And I said, oh, my God, how interesting. You know, um, I mean, because, you know, there are audiobooks. Obviously, someone has to read them. And I never thought about, you know, my me doing that. Right. And I was like, oh, my God, I read books all the time anyway. And <laughs> how cool it would be to read them aloud and then get paid for it. So then I did a little research and I said, well, there's also voice acting, which kind of goes hand in hand with it. I said, oh, I'm going to give that a try. And then I absolutely just fell in love with it. Wow. Now, what kind of books do you read normally for yourself if you weren't narrating? Uh, for myself, I read uh, mostly horror or, um, you know, <laughs> sci-fi. 
I'm a big Stephen King and Anne Rice nerd, so you know. Okay. Uh, Now, did that does that make the choice of what books you choose to narrate, or you'll narrate any kind of? Doesn't make no, no. Yeah, I'll read. I'll read just about any any genre. Okay. And speaking of genres, what kind of things are being put on uh, audiobooks nowadays? Everything you can think of. I have narrated cookbooks. I I narrate lots of self-help. Yeah, cookbooks. How do you yeah. do that? Well, give us an example of, of a recipe, <laughs> how you would narrate a recipe. <laughs> well, you're just reading what's on the page. I mean, you've, you've, I'm sure you've seen a cookbook, but they have, you know, you list out the ingredients and then, you know, the temperature, and then you narrate the steps in which to you know, how the recipe is made or how the recipe yeah, is yeah. done. You sit there and say, yes, Tom, you've seen a cookbook, right? I have seen a cookbook. <laughs> but, <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> so did you just say, okay, boss, I quit and all I'm going to make a fortune um, doing narration or was there some transition period? My direct managers knew that I did this on the side. And in February of this year, I I went to them and I said, I'm finally at that point where I cannot do both. I'm actually losing money with my voiceover business by, by working here. Coming to work. Yeah. Excuse me. So they, they understood. I mean, it wasn't like it was a problem with them or a problem with me. It was, you know, they understood. They wished me well and I had my two weeks and then I left. Yeah. But uh, you had been doing it for how long though? Um, At that that point, about a year and a half. Okay, so so there was a transition period. You just didn't stop your paycheck and then say, "I'm going to do this with no right. money coming in," right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And how? Uh, what was the beginning like when you got into this business? I mean, you getting how to get jobs and stuff. I found out that there were, you know, there's there's about a hundred different freelance marketplaces where you can find this type of work. Wow. <clears throat> Excuse me. One of them, I'm sure you're familiar with. I think I saw one of your podcasts that was about Fiverr. Yeah, of course. Yeah, Fiverr. Fiverr yeah, Fiverr mm-hmm. is a big one. Fiverr is where I find a lot of work, and then there's also the opening other- to this show. The voiceover was a Fiverr job. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fiverr, Upwork, and then of course there's ACX, Audible. There's there's tons of them available, and that's where I find most of my work. And of course, it was slow going at first. Because, you know, if you don't have that social proof on your profiles, it's a little difficult to have, you know, right. for customers to feel comfortable with hiring you. So it's a little slow going at first. But once I got I like going, yeah, it was great. So is this a uh, constant uh, jobs all the time or is it always audition, get a job? Yeah, every day you've every got a day. job. Lined up. Every day I have. I have a lot of at this point, I have a lot of repeat clients that hire me you know, multiple times a month. What happens if you get a sore throat? If I get a sore throat, then I reach out to my clients and I say, hey, I have a sore throat. Would you mind if I, you know, took a couple of extra days? And that's never been a problem. Now, here's the thing about me. You're somebody else wrote the words and you're reading them exactly, right? Yes, sir. All right. I wrote the words for my books, but I'm a big goofball. So I could be, uh, you mentioned playing with Barbies earlier. So I'm going to give you a sample <laughs> of how I would tell a Barbie joke in an ebook, And I might laugh for 10 seconds of, on my own. Is that acceptable? Or is that, should that be wiped out? <laughs> she's, she's laughing now for those of you listening right now. She's like, what a dumb dork this guy is. No, 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 no. I, so I adore you. You're so funny. Um, all right, let me give you my sample. And you say, don't do that, Tom. That's just stupid. Okay. All right. So so I'd be telling a joke in the book. Here, here, here it is. Hey, did you hear about the Barbie divorce doll? It came with, <laughs> see, I'm, it came with everything Ken had. <laughs> I, <laughs> see, I'd laugh. I'd laugh for 10 seconds because yeah. when I speak on this on stage, I'm laughing with everybody else and having a good time. All right, now this room tone thing. Yes. <laughs> All right. I'm on a dynamic microphone now because 370 episodes I've done and I've edited them all myself, but I got so sick with the condenser mic that picks up everything, editing out breaths. Yeah. 
And so not that's not breast, folks. You breasts. know, that's <laughs> breast. Yeah. <laughs> On breast, another thing they, you know, when I try to lose weight, people ask me, uh, how much weight you want to lose, Tom? And I say, I just want to get down to a B cup. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, so uh, I switched to a dynamic microphone for the podcast, but when I'm building this booth, I was thinking, okay, I'm going to go back to my good condenser mic to get really good quality, mm -hmm. but then breaths. What do you breaths. do about breaths? Yeah. Breaths. Yeah. Well, to be honest, there's rarely any authors that I've had that wanted me to cut out a complete breath or every single breath. A natural breath, I think, is it makes the audiobook sound better, in my opinion. And I think most authors would agree because you're telling a story. You know, it's the breath adds that human touch. You know, I honestly don't think that you need to remove all of your breaths. But if you wanted to, you know, a big breath, probably. But natural breaths, I think, are good. Or just so reduce, reduce the the sound of it a little bit, you know, because that's what I do a lot. I don't take everything out because then it goes all the way to zero. Right. And that and, sounds weird then. Yeah. And there's also, um, do you have any plugins with your DAW? Well, I have, uh, I have the Waves Debreather. I thought I'd try. And then I have an Isotope RX-7. Good stuff. But again, nobody, you know, I, how do you use them properly is the problem. And then also I was watching ACX University. ACX, tell them what ACX is. ACX is an arm of Amazon. It is where rights holders or authors find narrators and vice versa, and then they create audiobooks together. Yeah, so this is, uh, you know, they also help and teach people, you know, they have uh, videos on how to yes. do stuff, and they have very strict requirements. That's they the do. thing. And uh, the one engineer was saying, I don't want to see any plugins. I don't want to see any noise gates. I don't want to see any this, that, the other. Just EQ and normalize, and that's and and low noise floor. Yes. And it, and so, but I saw you putting a bunch of plugins in an EQ rack or in a effects rack. And everybody's you're recording. Doing, you're doing pretty darn good. <laughs> everybody's recording space is different. You know, maybe some people can get away with just a light EQ and, you know, maybe a little bit of noise reduction, but some other people can't. You know, you have to make your sound right for you, for your voice and your recording space. Yeah. And so, but that takes some experience to know what is really best. So that's where yeah, I guess you, you lot, ended up getting a coach, right? It takes a lot of trial and error. Yeah, absolutely. Now, do you consider yourself a coach? I don't consider myself a coach. I'm more of a um, someone who just wants to share information. Yeah, but you have some I, workshops coming up and you have some I online do. courses for sale, right? I do eventually. I would like to get into coaching in the future. Um, more of mentoring. You know, I do have a, a voiceover workshop coming up um, in a couple of weeks that I'm launching on my website. Which oh, will be, great courses and, uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one time with me. If you have a specific question and you're one of those people that likes to, you know, work with someone one-on-one -on -one versus just watching videos, mm -hmm. so you can ask questions on the spot. I'm going to be offering that for That's at voiceoverangela, voiceoverangela.com, right? Yes, sir. Voiceoverangela.com. And you mm -hmm. say you already have some courses over there too? I do. They are not available yet. I'm still doing some final tweaks, but I have a meditation course for people who want to get into creating meditations because oh. I narrate, I create a lot of them. It's a very popular niche right now in this industry. And also... Well, I could do that right now, Angela. <laughs> Look, watch, watch me. See? Pretty good, huh? <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Perfect. There are, uh, aside from the meditation course, there will be a success mindset course. There's an Upwork Basics course, and I'm also working on a Fiverr Basics course. So those the Upwork soon. folks used to be uh, for those oldsters uh, like me, uh, Elance. It used to be Elance, and now mm -hmm. it's Upwork. Um, so the meditation, are you talking words? Or are you just humming, or what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, meditations. Uh, I narrate guided meditations. I miss, I mix them with music and sound effects and that sort of thing. I also narrate, uh, affirmations. I have a lot of clients that want personalized affirmations to listen to in the morning, the afternoon, huh. that sort of thing. And then there's also, um, sleep stories. I thought they were supposed to do their own affirmations. Like I'm skinny. And... Well, I do <laughs> believe it or not. I, so there you have to say it for them. Well, yes, because they want to listen to it, you know, when they wake up before they go to bed or while they're sleeping. I have some clients that have created, you know, positive, life kind of. like my company is going to make X amount of dollars this year, that sort of thing over and over kind of like echoey and, you know, ethereal to music. And then they listen to that while they sleep. Why well, would you helps. make me when uh, I'm skinny? Just say it over and over again so I can listen to it while I'm eating pizza. I am skinny. <laughs> I am skinny. I am skinny. <laughs> that's, that's too sexy. I wouldn't say it like that. And you can't, I'd say it like, you're not skinny. What's wrong with you? Who are you trying to kid? <laughs> that's what I would say to hey, myself. Hey, I'd, I'd do it any which way you wanted. <laughs> that's right. You're, you get paid to do this, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so what's the best and worst part about this job or this profession? Yeah, you know, the best part is doing something creative, you know, um, helping my clients, you know, fulfill their, their, their needs. I mean, it's not only just the commercials, the video games and, you know, um, e-learning, all the other things that I do. But I mean, namely the meditations, I'm helping people heal with my voice. And I think that is one of the most rewarding things. Um, as far as cons, there aren't really a lot. I think there's a lot of training in the beginning um, to learn the technical side, but there aren't really any cons to running your own business other than, you know, you have to be 50 places at once. <laughs> but um, it's, and motorcycles it's, going by your and motorcycles going by, <laughs> yeah. And today I have landscapers outside making noise. Of course, I'm I'm hoping you can't hear it, but no, no. You know, every time I saw one of your videos, and you'd stop and you'd have that cute little look on your face, like I hear something, but we couldn't hear it. Um, well, uh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, right. But uh, that's got to disrupt your work, though, right? It does. It does. Um, being so close to my front door here in my studio, I hear like the air conditioner outside. So in the summertime in Arizona, I have oh. to stop a lot. So I'll record when the air conditioner is off. And then when the air conditioner is on, then I'll do the editing. I thought they run 24 <laughs> seven in, in Arizona. In the summer. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what's, is there any uh, of the books that you've done that just really stand out that you're the most proud of? There was one that I narrated recently uh, called Protecting Troy. It was written by uh, the grandparents of a little boy who's been, who's had some tough times, who was abused and neglected. And <clears throat> that one was difficult to narrate, but, um, but I wanted you were to. You into the story, right? Yeah. And I, and I wanted to help get this story out because this couple had written the book about their, their struggles you know, obtaining custody of their grandson. And I wanted to help get their story out, but it was definitely hard to get wow. through. But wow. I'm very proud Good of it. You. Good for you. And you said, uh, I think you started at a place, uh, what was it called? LibraVox? Is that? LibraVox. Yeah. yeah. Tell them about that. LibraVox is um, a website where you can donate your time. You can donate your narration skills and read either. You have sections. to be a good narrator to do it or they'll take anybody. Um, if I remember correctly, I don't think there was any kind of, you know, you didn't have to submit a demo to see if they liked your voice. It was kind of open to everyone. If you were willing to donate your time and if you had the gear, you had, you know, the microphone and the, the ability to record, they would allow you to. And you could record sections of a book or entire audiobooks. But was, were the specifications as exact as they are for ACX? You know, Pretty darn close. Stuff? Yeah, Pretty so darn you, gotta, close. you can't yeah. just uh, slop slop it in there and, and expect it to work. Yeah. Right. And that is that is exactly how I learned how to to edit and format was by working with LibraVox. The, the, is it free for people to listen? It is to? free. Yeah, they are. Yeah. There are books in the public domain. Good. So OK, free. so mm -hmm. so a lot of people who couldn't afford purchasing books can listen to stuff. Right. 
yeah well why aren't you great see you are an angel okay <laughs> how long did you uh, do that uh not very long um just a few months i think and then i yeah, decided so, to take to sign up with acx yeah okay beautiful so um come on now angel give us this now do you use the same voice all the time or do you have to most, do different voices most of the time most of the time i will use just my normal speaking voice i i do a lot of um Aside from audiobooks, I do a lot of e-learning, you know, like corporate training, online mm -hmm. like tutorials and stuff. So it's just m mostly conversational, just my normal voice. All right, give, give us a little sample of your sexy um, uh, e-learning voice. A sexy e-learning voice? Isn't that what? It, yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> I don't know yeah, what kind of e-learning you're listen. watching, but uh... no, nobody will listen if it does. If it doesn't sound sexy. <laughs> You know, imagine talking about corporate, you know, spreadsheets. And, uh. <laughs> so, welcome uh, to your online training. There you go. That I don't know if that like was a, sexy, but <laughs> sounds like a voiceover person right there. <laughs> it's amazing. So, uh, we got to take a brief sponsor break. When we come back, we're going to ask uh, Angela what a typical day looks like for her when she's dodging motorcycles and landscapers. <laughs> and how she stays motivated. All right, let's get back to the main event. We've got the angel of voiceover here, uh, voiceover Angela, and she uh, has been uh, 60 books. Oh, my goodness. Um, <clears throat> what's the average length of the books, uh, Angela? Most of the books I narrate. <clears throat> Excuse me. Most of the yeah, books I narrate. That out. <laughs> get it out. Do you do that a lot when you're actually narrating or are you all set up? And, uh, um, oh, there's a lot of mistakes that I have yeah, to take so out you later. Just edit them out. Yeah, that's the yeah, way you just edit it. them out. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. I, I would say most of the books that I narrate are between about 30,000 words and about 80,000 words. Pages, that is uh, about, I would say, 200 to maybe three or 400 pages. It all depends on also the font, you know. Some are you are, actually re looking at the book or is it you got a printout? I'm actually looking at a, usually a PDF or a doc file, like a window doc oh, file. I don't have like a physical book. All right. But it, so you don't have papers. It's on a tablet or something. Right. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. It just amazes me. You can, you got the discipline to sit there and read and keep it consistent. And, oh man, that's. But but you didn't you said you didn't have any formal training, right? I did have a coach for about a year, uh, but most of it came from you know just just reading on my own. Mm -hmm. um, you learn more by doing. You know, you learn to control your breaths and learn where to add the inflection and you know um, maybe a different character voice. I mean, it all kind of comes with just doing it. My gosh, I just narrated a book that had like 30 characters and it's, oh, it's difficult. Yeah. And some authors don't want you to do a different voice for different characters and some do. And this last book, there were about 30 different characters with accents. And so that one was was a little rough, but, you know, you get Charge more it. for that. No, it's all the same. Uh, all right. So <laughs> um, so pretend that you're me. And how would you do me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know if I could do you. <laughs> That's no, that was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you could do me anytime. <laughs> that, that's kind of like my, my male voice. Yeah. Do you ever have to do male voices? All the time. All the time. Really? Yeah. Cause you know, a lot of the books are, I mean, I do a lot of self-help books and that sort of thing where there aren't any people per se, mm -hmm. but, um, a lot of the ones that I do for the female voices, I'll give it maybe just a little bit of a lighter inflection or maybe just a different cadence. But, you know, male, male voices are usually a little bit more gruff. And, uh, <laughs> it's, it's so funny seeing that voice coming out of your face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, um, so how do you stay motivated? How do you stay motivated in your own business now? You're, responsible for your own income, paycheck, the whole bit. Yeah, because you really have to have passion for it, I think, to stay motivated. It's it's really not that difficult. I really, really, really enjoy what I do. 
I enjoy what I do, how I do it, the people that I help when I do it. So there, that's, that's all motivation. Not only that, but I'm providing for myself and my family. So that is all motivation. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but you, you, you are a self-described introvert, right? I am. <laughs> <laughs> Which amazed me because you got a YouTube channel and your, your voice is being heard by hundreds of thousands or millions of people around the world. I try not to think about that part. You're Siri, aren't you? You're Siri. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that a lot. I have a lot of people tell me, you sound like a robot. Is it that I sound like a robot or does it sound like I'm similar to Siri? Siri I they, do... they, they outed Siri a couple of years ago. They found out who yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah, I've seen that video. <laughs> so, uh, so tell them how to get a hold of you if they, if they are interested in to take your workshop or if they want one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching or advice. Uh, what's the best yeah. way to get a hold of you? Excellent. Yeah. Uh, my website is um, voiceoverangela.com. My mm -hmm. YouTube channel is voiceoverangela. <clears throat> Very creative. <laughs> I pretty much <laughs> kept everything the same. Like my Fiverr username is voiceoverangela. I'm voiceoverangela uh -huh. anywhere. I'm very easy to find. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Most of my sh my socials are voiceoverangela, um, aside from Twitter, which is Angela O underscore VO. But yeah, Voice Over Angela is the best way to reach out to me. You can contact me via email there. There's a, you know, a chat. So you're basically saying just about anybody could do this if they really wanted to. Absolutely. I think there's, there's a demand out there that none of us realized. And uh, and whatever your voice is, if somebody likes that voice, that's you get the job. Absolutely. Voice actors represent the every person in the world. You know, there is... There's every kind of different voice, every age group, every accent, everything, every voice is needed because we represent. Do you know any kids that do this? Uh, not personally, but I know that there, there are exists, kids. right? Yeah. Yeah. We have, uh, I've heard of kids reading or narrating kids books. And of course there's kids in commercials. There's mm -hmm. a lot of voice actors that can reach that, that range and, you know, adults that can make a, a child, like a child's voice, but there are children also that voice act. Amazing, amazing. Well, thanks yeah. so much for taking the time to enlighten us on this. Uh, thanks for having uh, me. Yeah, it's no, it's uh, when I, as soon as I saw you, like I ate up all your videos and I thought this Aww. is a, this is a beautiful story that uh, uh, you just decided to do this and you did it. And and nothing yeah. stops you with the motors, the noise and the, the, <laughs> all the stuff that the noises. Nope. That, Can't stop me. That, mm -mm. Yeah, I mean, that was the whole thing. It's supposed to be a quiet thing. And you, in one of those episodes, you had a motorcycle driving back and forth. <laughs> All the time, almost every day. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, thanks so much, Angela. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. It was real fun. Oh, it's my pleasure. So, everybody, we will catch you all in the next episode. See you later. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching this video. Again, I'll be sure to put Tom's information and his podcast information down below so you can easily find and subscribe. Check it out. It's a lot of fun. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, throw me a like. If you want to, subscribe. I really appreciate all of you. We're almost at 600 subscribers. I still can't believe it. It blows my mind. If you have any questions or comments for me, please, please check out my website. Send me an email leave a comment down below. I always love hearing from you guys. You guys have the greatest questions. Thanks again for watching and I will see you on the next one. Bye.